it's like having a baby, right? Nobody's prepared for all of this. And so what you do is you rely back on the stakeholders in the senior living world. I teach my students how to network with those stakeholders. Because guess sure. what? Me and you as brothers, we trust that person. Given If we're trusting that person with our mother's end of life care, and she happens to say, hey, you know, you don't need to clean this place out or rehab it. I've got a guy that I trust that's going to come make you an offer. Do you want to listen to him? My success rate's through the roof, man. I'm close. Yeah, to because you're getting such a warm introduction, right? It's it's like, okay, you trust mom to come and stay here or whether maybe it potentially might be even respite care where she's getting care at home and maybe it's part-time at home, part-time in a facility. You know, we've looked at that for my dad. Like if my mom, my mom has to have her own surgery. Um, she's got this vein in her leg that's starting to give her some problems. My mom's going to be kind of out of commission for four or five days. You know, where do we, where do we put dad during those four or five days because now he's recovering from hip surgery. You're talking to these type of placement agent that's maybe working in the facility, maybe working in home, could be a combination, one or the other. You trust them for care of a, you, you know your most loved person in the world, your mom, your dad. Are you going to listen to them if they say, hey, you know, I don't know what's going on with dad's situation. He can never go home again. Are you going to sell? Is there assets to sell? How are you going to pay for the assisted living or the nursing home care, whatever it might be? Yeah, we got to sell it. Oh, by the way, I've got somebody. So give me give me some other strategies. What, what are some other ways? Because that is great, especially thinking like I've looked at developing some assisted living facilities. I've gone and searched them for my own dad. I've talked to some of these people, the placement agents and the intake people. Yeah. And they've got 80 or 100 or 200 potential clients for one real estate investor because everybody in that facility is 60 to 90 years old and they all probably have a house to sell. So getting into that community would make logical sense. You're going to get multiple leads per month or per week from people that are Forever. coming or going. Forever, Josh. And I, I look at them as oil wells. I teach a method, it's called 20 is plenty. And what I mean by that is if you have 20 people that know who you are like me, if they know who I am and they think of me during their business today because they're dealing with families in this exact situation every single day, I have more than enough leads. My mm -hmm. business now comes to me. Every investor I talk to, Josh, spends 90% of their time trying to make their phone ring with leads. Mm -hmm, sure. I get phone calls with appointments from these stakeholders. They say, hey, Phil, can you be at Bob's house at 2.30 on Tuesday to make an offer? Yes, I can. Got it. So I, I, I've simplified my life. I have a great life. I don't work that many hours because yeah. I've built the relationships with the right people.